Hello my scholars, you welcome to my school YouTube channel. My name is Emmanuel and in today's video lesson in chemistry, we'll be considering a very important topic, which is water. Water is important for everyone. We make use of water every time. Please stick around, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back to my school YouTube channel and like I said earlier on today we'll be looking at water in this video lesson. Now let's get down into it. Water as a topic we'll be considering different subheadings. We'll be looking at water as a product of combustion of hydrogen and its composition by volume. We'll be considering water as a solvent, the atmospheric gases dissolved in water and their biological significance. We'll be looking at properties of water. We'll be looking at hard and soft water. We'll be considering temporary and permanent hardness. And we'll be looking at the methods of making our hard water soft. We'll be looking at treatment of water for town supply. And finally, we'll be considering tests for water. How do we carry out tests to test for the presence of water in a particular substance? Let's move on to the next slide sources of water many school of thought have it to be that rainwater is one of the purest some said it is dirty some said because it is in the atmosphere but it's interesting to know that the purest form of natural water actually is rainwater why because it is formed as a result of the condensation of water vapor in the atmosphere you remember that when we talked about the different separation techniques, when we talked about condensation, condensation has to do with boiling of the liquid substance and then as the vapor is being trapped, the vapor that should escape is being trapped, okay? Once the vapor is trapped, it gets cooled. Once it gets cooled, we form liquid back. That kind of water is as a result of condensation as the water vapor that is supposed to escape is being trapped okay and collected in a container once it gets cool you have a pure substance because it is gotten from vapor so that water that we get from condensation is actually a pure water okay the purest water we get that from our acs air conditions you have water at the back of the maybe the water that is coming out from that it is gotten from condensation okay so those water are very pure rain water it's not artificial it is natural so that is how rainwater is actually formed so it is free from mineral salts because it is a natural form of distilled water rainwater sometimes dissolves some impurities from the polluted environment that's from the atmosphere and this makes it to be hard but it does not change the fact that it is still the purest form of natural water because it is gotten it is a natural form of distilled water okay the water we use in carrying out experiments analysis in the lab okay so that is the natural form of it spring water well is the rainwater that sank through the porous soil layers and collected above an impervious layer sometimes you have in some states in nigeria where you have water coming out from the rock okay this is the water that has been dredged in the layer soil layer the uppermost the previous layer of the soil that is actually collected well the water is pure too but sometimes the water from the spring water is not a good source of drinking water because it contains some dissolved mineral salts that is present and then you have some dust present in it you have some disease causing germs also that we can have from the rock or from the soil that is coming into so it is not advisable or it is not a good source of water that can be consumed by man because you can have a lot of fungi you can have a lot of germs you can have a lot of diseases that can cause harm to human for man consumption let's move on to the next slide well water is another source of water where we have water that is being stagnated okay stagnant water 
that collects on the top of the impervious layers of the soil after rain has fallen. Okay, we have the water, it is just so uh, you know stagnant, and because it is stagnant, microorganisms can go in there. Okay, microorganisms can go in, can germinate, can reproduce inside, and they can even multiply. So it is not a good source of water. And apart from microorganisms being there, you have some clay, okay, depending on the place where the well is actually dug. Some in the clay soil, you have clay getting into it, you have some mineral salts dissolved into it, and you have those dead organisms, organic matters that are present inside the well. So that is even though it's another source of water, well water, it is not good. It is not a good source of drinking water. River water is another form of water that is formed by coming together of springs and other running waters. Okay, that one flows. Okay, you can have it flowing from one town to another, from one village to another. But it contains also a lot of dissolved mineral salts. You can have air present in them. You can have you know remains of dead organic you know matters also present in them. Plants and animals, of course, we have plants that are flowing with the water. Some with dead decaying things, and so it is not. A good source of drinking water but it is one of the source of water sources of water that we have as well lakes and seas form a reservoirs for rivers and other running waters water from these two sources is not good for drinking why because they contain a lot of impurities due to the accumulation of impurities from the various sources of water so you have lakes flowing you know running from one place to the other you have seas and oceans you know flowing from one place to the other they now reserve they they, they, they they get collected in a particular place okay for rivers and then other water that are running so it is not because of the impurities that they contain in, it's not a good source of water for drinking by human except it is being treated before we can make use let's move on all the water we've talked about as the sources of water needs to be treated before they can be used, either for man's consumption or for carrying out analytical uh, uh, processes or carrying out analysis in a laboratory. So how do we treat water? We have two types of treated water. We have distilled water and then we have water treatment plants for town, okay, for township or for, for human consumption. Distilled water. Distilled water is chemically pure water because it is prepared by condensing steam using the Libby condenser. We said that when we're talking about the different forms of separation techniques of uh, mixture in our previous video lessons. Okay, we said that in distillation of water or of any substance, there are two processes that are involved. We talk about boiling. And then we talk about condensation. There must be boiling first. Once the substance is boiled, and then it temp at a particular temperature, once it gets cooled, the vapor gets cooled, and then it condenses. That kind of substance that is gotten from condensation is very pure because it is in a pure state. It has been what boiled, and then at a particular point, it gets it. So it is often used in the chemical laboratory in the preparation of reagents. If we must get an accurate and precise results of our analysis then we must prepare our solutions we must prepare our reagents with distilled water because it is the purest form of water in carrying out analytical work in the lab preparation of drugs okay companies where drugs are produced manufactured distilled water are used and then certain industrial processes so that is where we make use of distilled water so because in the preparation of drugs or manufacturing of drugs or synthesis of drugs synthesizing of drugs those drugs are pure substances these are of course these are things that are taken in into the body of organism so it must be of the purest form so because of that we cannot jeopardize the efforts or try to you know produce reagent or produce those drugs with an impure kind of water so that is why distilled water is prescribed to be used in carrying out reagents or in manufacturing of drugs in the 
production companies or in industrial company. This is what I poured also into car batteries to create the electrolyte that powers the battery. In fact, in some of our uh, solar panels, okay, you have them, the solar, the solar connection, you have them. This distilled water are used there into the lithium batteries, okay? We have them present there. So battery fluid is a mixture of sulfuric acid and distilled water, not well water or not rain water. No, it must be distilled water because it is pure sulfuric acid, that's your H2SO4, with the distilled water. That is what we have in our car batteries. Let's move on to the next slide. Now, let's think about this. Between the ionized water so people call it demineralized okay the ionized water is the kind of water where all the ions or almost all the ions had been removed okay from that is present in the water has been removed or that's why we call it demineralized water all the minerals that are present talk about the elements have been removed completely or maybe we still have little of that inside it has been removed from the water through chemical process so between the ionized water and distilled water, which is better for analysis in the laboratory? Remember that we said that the ionized water is the water where all the ions has been removed. When you see D, D means remover, okay? We talk about dehydration, okay? That means remover of water, okay? We talk about when you see this in chemistry, D, it means D, it has been removed. Now, the ionized, ion, ion that have been removed, ion that are present in the water have been removed, Okay, that water, do you think is fit for analysis or analytical work in the laboratory or distilled water is better? Also, in manufacturing of drugs, which one is advisable? Should we go for distilled water or we should go for the ionized water? Well, you can think about it. For me, the distilled water is a better conductor of electricity. Yes, because we have hydrogen ion present in there we have hydroxyl ion present there in the distilled water okay but for the ionized water we've removed all the ions that are present there and there are little or no you know ions present in there distilled water is pure don't forget because it is gotten as a result of a condensation okay of the vapor the vapor that should have escaped it was condensed and gotten back to this so distilled water in terms of conductivity okay yes there's a particular range of values in which the conductivity uh, value of water that is used in production or manufacturing of drugs should fall in we have depending on the drugs but we have uh, according to who we have between 0 0.1 to 5 5 micrometers should be the highest value that we should have okay so if you have values is not that you should not have at all because the drugs that are taken in have what they do so in the laboratories you generally distilled water has a better conductivity compared to the ionized water so making it ideal for laboratory experiments when compared to the ionized water of course in some companies some companies make use of the ionized water instead of distilled water okay the ionized water is not free from pathogens don't forget because when we talk about analytical uh, analysis in the laboratory we are not talking about chemical analysis alone we talk about microbiology also which is very key okay and when you talk about microbial analysis you're talking about microorganisms present in the water so if it's going to be analyzed then you can't use the ionized water because in the ionized water what was the only thing that was removed is what is the ions gems are still there okay microorganisms growth could still be there there's every tendency the tendency is so high so it is preferable and better that we use distilled water in a laboratory work compared to the ionized water because the ionized water is not free from pathogens such as bacteria and viruses could be present even though the ions has been removed let's move on to the next slide these are diagrams of um, the domestic water distillers we could have. In fact, some small lab, laboratory, chemical lab, make use of this. Okay, this is easy. It is not the industrial type. It's not the big, or bigger one. This one you can easily afford. This even in our homes. Okay, you see this. The plug. You have a point at the back where 
water inlets, okay? Maybe the raw water gotten from, uh, uh, from rain water or from, from river or from, from wherever, from well, okay? Is raw water. It is passed, it is connected to two hose to this, okay? And once you power is, this is, you can see, this is the tap here. So once you power it, what happens? There's a boiling, boiler, like a boiling ring at this base here yeah, or inside of this. So once you power it, it boils the water. Once the water boils, now you can see there's an enclosure here. So instead of the vapor escaping out, like your normal kettle you use in boiling, you have it being, you know, passing through. The vapor will be passing through this place. And then this, at this point, there, there, you can see there's, there's hose here. There's another hose that will be connected here where this is connected into a container, a clean container, okay, where the water is going to be. So as this one is passing through here, there's another place where you connect at the back water to just cool the temperature. So once the vapor is escaping to this place and the temperature is, uh, the temperature is being cooled, you discover that the water vapor begins to turn into liquid and then it will be passing through the hose into a container or into this then there's another chamber inside of this if you don't want to connect it outside so that as it gets good the water is formed there and then you can open your tap at this point and you get your distilled water it's very easy the same one this is another one here you can see this is your container where the distilled water treated water is going to be you run this into this and then there's a temperature here you see it once it gets to 100 degree of course that's the boiling point of water the vapor that is to be escaped will be trapped here and condensed in this point. Once it's condensed and then it gets cooled also, what happens? It begins to what? Drip into this. You can see the water. This is your distilled water very clean. So this diagrams of water distiller. Let's move on now to the next slide. Water treatment for township. How do we treat water that is going to be given out or be consumed by people or humans that live in a particular area. In water treatment plants, raw water from natural sources are subjected to some kind of treatment in order to make it suitable for consumption. Because you can't just get, you know, water from the well, water from the river and start consuming and drinking it in because it is impure. Okay, there's need to make it what suitable for what? For consumption. And before that is done, there are four stages, four processes that the raw water will have to undergo before it is treated and ready for consumption. The first is coagulation or flocculation, as some people will call it. The second one is sedimentation. The third one is filtration. And the fourth one is disinfection to ensure that the microorganisms are actually killed completely in it. Now we have come to the end of the preview of this video lesson. If you want to have access to the full video, please click on the link in the description below that takes you to the My School website where you have access to subscribe. Please subscribe. And in the full video, we'll be talking about coagulation as a process. We'll be explaining what sedimentation is. We'll be explaining what filtration is. And then we'll be explaining what disinfection is and lots more. I hope you enjoyed this content. If yes, please don't forget to click the like button, hit the subscribe button, and finally tap the notification bell to keep you informed once we upload our next video.